Hello and welcome back to EF2000 Retro. In this tutorial video I will introduce you to the Defensive 8 subsystem or DAS of the EF2000 aircraft. As you should know by now, Falcon DMS is first and foremost an F-16 Comet Flight Simulator and the EF2000, like most other aircraft, relies on the F-16 systems modeling. Nevertheless, as explained in previous videos already, there are a lot of configuration options and I have exploited these to best implement the EF-2000 aircraft's defensive aid subsystem for the EF-2000 retro add-on. The general arrangement of the DAS covers the overall electronic warfare system functions as a radar warning receiver, as a only really working warning system aboard the aircraft, as well as the chef and flare countermeasure suspensors and the internal electronic countermeasure systems to jam enemy radar threats. Also covered is the emitter management, albeit it is limited to the radio frequency silence switch functions, which will be explained. The implementation is essentially a combination of selectable avionic options, adjustable avionic parameters, cockpit indications and interactions through the controls as well as custom cockpit audio and voice warnings respectively. I have selected uh, an empty dogfight mode session for the initial introduction and we will then later on enter another one to illustrate the system in practice. So let's start with the radar warning receiver first. For the EF2000 I have selected the ALR67 V3 radar warning receiver among the available options and I have selected it because it in my opinion represents the overall best match for the rear aircraft's radar warning system. Everything considered but of course it is not a perfect match. As already explained in previous videos, the center multifunction head-down display here serves as a radar warning receiver azimuth scope, but it also includes a number of other DAS indications which we will cover in a while. So let's start with the radar warning receiver to power it up. You have to left click on the DAS subsystem key here on the left glare sheet and this will on one hand highlight is a DAS legend with the bars and on the other hand it will also display here the DAS format range rings. As you can see the green inner circle encompasses the letters B for the build and test mode, the bit will be over in a while and N for the normal mode operations. There will also be a fault indication during failures. And if we select the priority mode with the soft key here to the right side, then the number of thread emitters display is limited. Our soft key is here on the right side, are dedicated to radar warning receiver functions only. We have the typical function of handoff to switch the highlighting frame to different emitter threads if multiple threads are present only the thread emitter highlighted can be heard. The separation or sep soft key functions associated with the right click separates multiple thread emitters. With search we enable the display of search radars if this function is disabled search radars will not show up, but the highlight bars will flash to indicate there is activity detected from search radars. And the same is for unknown emitters selected with the right click. And finally we have the missile launch test push button. If we click it the warning is triggered. Missile. We have seen at the center the missile launch warning sy symbol and here it's a missile voice warning confirming that the threat missile is in flight. 
With implementation of the AN AR67 with the radar warning receiver, however, only missile launch warnings against semi active from radar guided missiles are triggered for radar guided missiles with an active seeker head. You typically get threat warnings, of course, but no missile launch warning as such. You can adjust the display brightness with the rocker switch here located on the left side so right click decreases the brightness you can see this only being reflected by the symbols the N and L letters here in this case and with the left click we increase the brightness likewise left and right click on this rocker switch here to the right side will increase and decrease the audio volume of the radar warning receiver system while the functionality of the RWR is the same as in the FA-18, the detection range is a little bit higher, so you should be able to detect radar threats a little bit earlier. One of the nice features of this radar warning receiver is that threat emitters are also displayed as spokes on the HUD. This is currently not visible as we have no threats, but it is useful to keep a head-up situation awareness on threat emitters as it is also the case in the real EF-2000 aircraft. Not enabled is the top RWR threat symbol for the JHMCS because such a symbol doesn't exist on the Typhoon's helmet mount display at least not with present capability standard. So let's briefly cover the missile approach warning system. It isn't really implemented in Falcon BMS, but callbacks have been implemented to power or depower the system. This can be done using the MOS switch on the aft systems gang down the right side console here. A left click powers the system, a right click depowers it. When it is powered, the more transmission symbol is displayed here in the top left corner of the DAS format. But at the moment it is just eye candy as is. The EF-2000 aircraft features a built-in electronic countermeasures system, which is powered with the ECM switch, also located on the aft systems gangbar. The second soft key from top here on the left side currently has no caption. But if you power the system with the ECM switch, left click here, you can see the ECM label appears and that's the confirmation that the ECM system is powered. You can give consent with the down press of a countermeasures switch and this causes the highlight bars to box the ECM caption and the ECM transmission symbols to appear to the bottom left and that's the indication that ECM transmissions are in progress. The right press of the CMS switch disables ECM transmissions by removing the consent, so the symbology occults. The general electronic warfare system functions are controlled with the DAS soft key, which is the first from top here left clicking cycles through the different electronic warfare system modes right clicking does it in reverse order default is the off state so the dust is depowered a left click selects the next step standby mode which is powered now we have the manual mode for manual countermeasures employment semi mode for semi automatic employment and the automatic mode and finally the bypass mode which bypasses the chef layer dispensers so that you can release individual expendables. Let's move on to the countermeasure suspensers. The real aircraft has four in total. For less noise a brief freeze. As you can see the layer dispensers are built into the inboard flipper and actuators and the shift dispensers are built into the rear end section of the integrated tips the pylon launchers where that's the pylon where the SRAM is loaded. 
you collectively power and depower the dispensers with a XPD or expandable switch, left click powers, right click depowers. If the system is powered, you get an indication of the chef layer quantity readout, but only if the DAS is at least in standby mode. If not, only the CF letters for chef and flare are displayed, and that indicates the dispensers itself are powered. With the electronic warfare system implementation, you have the default countermeasures programs 1 to 4. These are selectable with the modding keys located here. Left click selects program 1, right click program 2, and the same is true for program 3 and 4. And the one that you have selected is initiated with an uppress of the CMS switch. Currently, it's a chef only programs so if you switch to external view the chef are uh, released with an uppress countermeasures program 6 is actually initiated with the left press of the CMS This releases in this case a single chef and single flare, but uh, that depends on how you program the programs as such. You can alternatively directly initiate program 5 or 6 with a left uh, or right click on this modem key here, Chat respective flare. layer. Chat flare. You also see a decrease in the count and if you use flare jettison program. All flares are jettisoned and gone. So let's finally cover the transmitter management here. This is done with the exit or transmit subsystem key. If it's boxed, it's uh, equivalent to radio frequency switch in normal position. And you can cycle through it with left and right clicks. You see quiet mode displayed on the radar tech format, and you see a single dash that indicates the quiet mode is selected. In addition, the highlight bars from the XMED subsystem key have been removed, indicating no transmissions are now enabled. And another press selects the silent mode with this maximum radio frequency silence. And with another press, we turn to normal operations. So let's now switch to a practical illustration in another dogfight session. So we are now in a new dogfight session. It's the same MiG-29 as a threat aircraft. We have it on our radar scope and now we will wait until it closes in and I can illustrate the audio tones triggered by its radar warning receiver and display the symbology as well. That's a new audio warning for a new threat. You can see the 29 displayed indicating it's a MiG-29. We will now allow it to close in and launch a semi active radar guided missile so we can hopefully see and hear the missile launch warning and also the warning sounds if the threat radar is targeting us. We now see the chevrons which indicate we should jam the threat. So now we are in attack. Here is here the warning. Now we can get concert, can add the ECM. This is a targeting warning. And what you also can see is the scope. Chat. Flare. On the hut to the left side, so you can always maintain the situation minus and threat, even in better conditions. 
that is noteworthy that uh, ECM effectiveness can be adjusted as well. It has been a little bit improved also to compensate for the lack of some advanced features that the system, the real defensive aid subsystem offers. So it will hopefully offer you a reasonably decent protection and situational awareness, even if not all real threat running sensors and counter measures are currently implemented, but the combination of the organic options, data, indications, controls and sounds at least provides a sort of dust simulation, partial simulation, which should be warning, really warning, reasonably warning, realistic. Warning, warning. But as you can see, it's Caution. not a perfect Caution. protection, so system, so your ECM system is not foolproof. I have not really obeyed the missile, but you hopefully got how the system works in practice. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something and maybe we see us next time. Bye.